Florida State is rolling. Top five in the rankings. Top five in recruiting. 4-0 start. Let's talk some FSU recruiting. But FSU fans, do me a favor first. Subscribe to the On3 Recruits channel. Look at that. Almost at 10K. You guys, this channel's only three weeks old. We're almost to 10K. Help get me there. All right. Let's bring on Michael Langston from Warchant. Mike, the Knolls hit the bye week at 4-0 with big wins over LSU and Clemson. They got a top five recruiting class. We're going to get to some of these uncommitted targets in a second, but there was a major development last night. Moultrie, Georgia, four-star wide receiver, Nykar decommitted from Georgia. Mike, he was at the Southern Miss game. He's teammates yep. with FSU five-star commit Landon Thomas. Is this one FSU's to lose with Nykar? I think they're one of the heavy favorites because they've got a visit for him. I actually visited Nykar two times this year, and so I went in the spring earlier and he told me, like, yeah, yeah I, I kind of sensed that around people around there that he was going to likely decommit. And then went back there for a game, saw Nykar play. That was, the, that was the weekend he was going to FSU Southern Miss. And he told me, like, really, I love what this offense is doing. I think it's FSU and Miami. Those are the top two teams, I think, for him. And I think FSU, for me, has the momentum in this recruitment where – you know, you already have Landon Thomas. You you already have a proven product on the field. Um, he's already, he's already told me also he would be at that FSU Miami game. That's what he told me that week. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think FSU's kind of positioned themselves pretty well for him. I wouldn't say they're the team to beat for sure, but I would say they position themselves well to to pull this off to get another uh, Colquitt Packer. All right. Well, yeah, I agree with you. I think if if um... He decommitted from Georgia. I would look at the two in-state teams in Miami and Florida State. Mm. I'm sure both will try to get him on campus soon. I don't think Nykar is in any rush to make a second decision. So we'll keep tabs on him. All right, Mike, I want to talk to you about five-star cornerback Charles Lester. He committed to FSU in August. Maybe it was the end of July. I can't remember. Either way, Charles Lester's rock-solid commitment until this weekend. He shows up in Gainesville for UF's game against Charlotte. Is there any concern with Charles Lester and what's going on between him and UF? I don't sense a concern. I think I sense a, a kind of expectance of, of that he was going to take visits, just like K.J. Bolden took visits. Uh, you know, K.J. is going to Auburn, going to Georgia. I think I think Charles Lester got an opportunity. He's going to take a visit, and I think he likes uh, you know some of the Florida, Florida staff. So I think there's a likability as far as what they're doing. But I don't think it's like uh, they're hitting a panic button. They're saying, oh, man, we're, we, we, we could lose them. I think they feel what they've done is, is going to be suitable. I think you will see Charles Lester on FSU's campus once they <laughs> – people forget they haven't really hosted anybody for a home game. So they've been on the road all this yeah. time. First, I mean, their only game was Southern Miss, and a lot of recruits don't see that game. They want to see, like, when you play a, a regular, you know, marquee opponent. So – um, but I think, um, you know, a lot of these co prospects are going to be on campus. But right now, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sensing kind of the red radar going off. I think FSU feels good about their position. I think they know what how Charles feels about him, and they know what product they're putting on the field. So I think, uh, I think they feel very good about, you know, just that they can secure the commitment. But it, it is a concern anytime you're dealing with your rivals and they're taking visits. And um, for me, this one's a little. Just a, a little bit more concerning because it's for it's, it was against a nobody opponent for Florida, so it's kind of like, hey, he wants to see them. You know, this isn't like you're going to a good game mm -hmm. and you're going. So I think that's a little bit, but I still feel good about FSU keeping him. But yeah, it's going to be just like every recruitment. You're going to, have to yeah, it's easy to secure them. It's it, the hardest part is is keeping them and signing them. So I think they'll have to finish it off. But I I think they will. I feel good yeah. about their chances. Yeah, it's like you want to get those five stars committed, but also when they are, don't be surprised when other teams come after them. They're some of the best players in the country, so you know other, especially rivals, are not going to give up on them. All right, biggest position of priority moving forward. Now's a good time to kind of look at uh, where FSU needs to fill some holes at the bye week. Only a couple spots left, though, Mike, in this 2024 class. So what does FSU need to finish with? I think they need a defensive tackle. I think they, yeah. they desperately need one of those in their class. I think that's a position they're going to have to add because you're you're going to lose some guys. So, for me, defensive tackle is the top one. I think defensive end is right there behind it. 
And then after that, I think safety is a place that you want to get some guys because that's a place that they're not, um, you're not deep at that position. So they need to start adding guys. Uh, so they ha- don't have to go to the portal and fill that hole. So I think those are the three positions for me that I've circled that I think they're going to really highlight to finish this class. Cause you're talking about only five or six guys that would, you know, assuming they sign everyone they have, mm-hmm. that's you only have like five or six spots that you would fill in, in this class. All right. Well, this week, as I mentioned, football takes a break with FSU on the bye week. But you know what never takes a break? Recruiting. (laughs) So as the team has a bye week, that means the coaches are going to hit the road. What are some of the major stops the staff is expected to make this week? Yeah, I think a major one. uh, I don't think I'm actually telling anybody anything they don't know. LJ McRae, defensive end, Mainland High School. That's one of their biggest defensive line targets. They want this kid. They know he's going to officially visit in October. Um, so this is you need to set that up and, and make it big. So that's one where they're in a tough battle with Florida, Georgia, Miami. All these teams are in there. So that's one that I definitely think they'll hit up. Mm-hmm. I think Kai Bates is another one committed to LSU, four-star DB. Yeah. I think that's a guy that I've heard that he's pretty shaky with, with his commitment to LSU. So I think that's a guy that's always liked FSU. David Johnson's the main recruiter there. He's he's taken quite a liking to Patrick Sertain. So that's another one I think they'll do. I think it's a given, too, that they're going to go see Jamari Howard. Right. I feel FSU leads the four-star DB out of Miami. So I think that's definitely a guy they'll see. They'll probably see some juniors stop by and see you know, Mr. Armando Blunt, the five-star plus guy that has come into Miami. So I think they'll definitely – see a lot those are some of the main guys um Mm -hmm. you know that just jump out to me i think wide receiver jeremiah smith is another guy you absolutely expect them to see probably even jojo trader when they go over there in saquon patterson the safety on that same team so i think you'll see them spend a lot of time in south florida in my opinion this weekend because there's a lot of targets that they're they're very high on but i also think the priority guys that i've mentioned um in the ones that are left there as far as uncommitted guys, NICAR obviously is one that I expect the, the mm-hmm. FSU will go see as well. So I think those are kind of the main ones that, that expect FSU to make a push for. And certainly probably, you know, a lot of times when these coaches go over there, you know, they're, you, you, people forget like they can't talk in, in person with them, but I think what they're out is they just show them like, hey, you're a priority. And then usually what happens is the kid calls them later, they talk, and then it's kind of kind of to set the tone like we want to get a visit set up or something. That, there's always something they're trying to get to where you're, they're trying to gain your interest to give them a look or give them a stronger look. And I think that's the purpose of a lot of these visits. Mm, yeah, great point on the LJ McRae stop this week. It sets up almost perfect for FSU, who will get him on campus in October for an official visit right before his final decision. So we'll see what happens there. But UF and Georgia and Miami, to an extent, are all heavily yep. involved. Great week to catch up on recruiting over at warchant.com. Michael Langston, thank you for stopping by the inside scoop. I believe you, bye. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed that content, be sure to subscribe to the On3 Recruits channel. We have a new page dedicated only to recruiting. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now.